one thing. Have you ever played Jenga before? Yeah. 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 The world's like Jenga, man. If you move one little piece out, the whole thing can collapse. And you might be like, oh, but that piece is damaged. It's making the whole thing ugly. Maybe. But maybe what's there is not necessarily good. But what's there very well might be the best that possibly can be. You have a loved one who is in a coma. Doctors say they're probably not going to come out. Let's say it's someone you love a lot. Think about the person you love most in the world and you're in charge of their medical decisions because they're in a coma. And you have to decide if you're going to keep them on life support or if you're going to take them off of life support. Are they going to live today or are they going to die? Is it good for them to die? Is it good for them to stay on life support? Neither of those are good options, man. So what you're trying to do is pick the best of the bad, of the bad options. A lot of times life is like that. You've got to pick the best of the bad options. People might say, see, religion has ruined everything. But here's the thing. Why wouldn't you just kill? Remember, you need religion to come along and tell you, you shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. I don't need religion to tell me that. No, actually, you really, really, really do. Because those codes didn't exist before religion. That's what religion brought into the world. It brought moral codes into the world. It brought ethics into the world. You might think like, oh, but today I don't need that. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. You do need laws to stop you from doing a lot of things that we do. That much is true. And so you can't kind of throw the baby out with the bathway. In other words, if you get rid of religion, you get rid of all the moral codes as well. You know? Any, if, if, there is no, if, there's, if there's no such thing as God, there's no such thing as, as, as right and wrong, good and evil, then when you heard the story just now, I told you about them murdering people at the, at the rave and then raping them next to the bodies of their, of their dead friends. Some of you are horrified by that. I would ask you, why are you horrified by that? It's just, you disagree with it, right? There's nothing wrong with it because there's no such thing as good and evil, right? You know, they, when they're, they're, a report came in that they were going, and they, that, there were 40, that they found the bodies of 40 dead babies as they were going house to house and murdering families, dead in their cribs, infants. Is it true? I don't know. It seems awfully good timing. It seems like it's a good propaganda tool. I don't know that it's true. I don't know that it's not. But if you can see the, if you can see 40 dead babies piled up and be horrified by it, I'd ask you, why are you horrified by that? Isn't, it, isn't there no such thing as good and evil? Isn't there no such thing as right and wrong? But well, we intuitively know that there is such a thing as, these, as, as right and wrong and good and evil. And so... It's a hard situation, man. Again, what do you do? Even if you think one side is completely right and the other side is completely wrong, even if you think that, so you can go tell them to give peace a chance, either side. Both sides, again, have human beings living there. Both sides have, had, have, have suffered, have, have, have lost people who they love and are dear to them. So who wants to go tell them? Yeah, go for it, monster. <laughs> we'll send you over there. <laughs> Here's the part of the problem, though. What existed, before, uh, I guess the question is, what's better? What's happening right now with cities getting leveled, people being kidnapped, raped, tortured, murdered, mutilated, or what was there before with the divisions and all that? Is that was that better? Or is it better what we have right now with the war and the chaos? I guess it depends on who you ask. Over here in the United States, I can tell you quite clearly what we had was better, easily. If I was living right there, I might not agree with that. <laughs> as long as somebody else has to live under those conditions, I, uh, I, I, might, be a little bit, I, might, be, I might be a little more forgiving of it. I, hey, living over here in San Diego, I gotta tell you guys, we need to give peace a chance. If I was living over there though, I just might have been one of those paragliders with a rifle, giving a different kind of peace a chance. I don't know. So, all times the danger. Yeah. So now the danger becomes, and so the, so the really hard thing, the really, really, really hard thing for us though now becomes the world that we're living in, it might be the best of all possible worlds. I wrote up here on the, earlier on the board, I still have it, yeah, good versus best. Is it that things are good right now? It might not be good, but maybe they're the best that things can possibly be. 
And that's a hard thing for us to get our heads around. Like we look at the world and we're like, we need change. We need to fix things. We need to improve it. Yeah, but what happens when you fix things? When you fix things? And fixing things is not as easy as just like moving some people around. And, you know, you move one thing. Have you ever played Jenga before? Yeah. 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 The world's like Jenga, man. You move one little piece out, the whole thing can collapse. And you might be like, oh, but that piece is damaged. It's making the whole thing ugly. Maybe. But maybe what's there is not necessarily good. But what's there very well might be the best that possibly can be. And of course, what that also means is some of us are going to eat a lot of shit in the process. Because like I said, things were, things were, not, were not good before, but they were, they were the best they possibly could be. And I can tell you that because I live in San Diego. If I was living in there, if I was living in there, I probably wouldn't have the same perspective. I would say, no, things could be better. Things could be better, yeah. But a lot of times in life, you're gonna to have to face up to that. And that's not just in something like war, where, you know, there's good and best. <clears throat> you have a loved one who is in a coma. Doctors say they're probably not gonna come out. Let's say it's someone you love a lot. Think about the person you love most in the world and you're in charge of their medical decisions because they're in a coma. And you have to decide if you're gonna keep them on life support or if you're gonna take them off of life support. Are they gonna live today or are they gonna die? Is it good for them to die? Is it good for them to stay on life support? Yeah. Neither of those are good options, man. So what you're trying to do is pick the best of the bad, of the bad options. A lot of times life is like that. You've gotta pick the best of the bad options. And that's dissatisfying to a lot of us because we think like, no, no, we should strive for perfection. But if you strive for perfection, you can end up ruining the whole thing, man. You know, like, you know, if none of you ever tried to fix something in life and you made it so much worse just by trying to fix it. And that's a lot of the things that we do. A lot of times we'll try to fix things in life and we'll end up just making them infinitely worse. You ever try talking yourself out of something and you just made it way worse or you said the wrong thing? You know? Sometimes in life, it's we're aiming for is the best, not perfect. And because perfection is the enemy of the good. If we're always striving for perfection, but then again, how do you know what's good enough? I guess it depends on where you live. An hour later, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Wednesday. <laughs>